But first, our top story this half an hour, Hong Kong in crisis mode. The city rocked by brutal protests for six straight months, showing no signs of stopping. Police today fired tear gas in Hong Kong's financial district and on two university campuses. A police spokesman said that the city has been pushed to the brink of a total breakdown. Joining me right now is the chief of staff for Vice President Mike Pence. Mark Short is here. Mark, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Maria, thanks for having me on this morning. Are there any plans uh, on, on the part of the administration to react to what's taking place in Hong Kong? Well, Maria, I think the administration has spoken out several times talking about the need to resolve this peacefully and calling on both the protesters and uh, the Chinese government to resolve it peacefully. This is an agreement that was signed 35 years ago um, to uh, to make sure that the 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 situation in Hong Kong is one that that China respects the independence. And, uh, and we're calling on China again to make sure that, that they help to make sure that this is resolved peacefully, that people have the right um, to protest and that those are preserved and protected. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the issues is that this is a lot of young people, Mark, and they're looking at their future and they're saying, I don't want to be under authoritarian rule. That's not why I'm in Hong Kong, as, as China seems to be breaking another promise toward keeping Hong Kong independent, which was the promise in the handover to the British. Right. Well, I don't want to get too far ahead, Marie. I, don't, I think that uh, we agree that they need to make sure that those, um, uh, the agreement they signed with the Brits are, is maintained and protected. And I think that that's an indication as to how they will conduct other agreements across the globe and other, and other trade deals and other agreements. Um, I think that this administration has spoken out, and you heard the vice president just a couple weeks ago in an important speech lay out a lot of our concerns that the Communist Party of China has not entered into sort of the 21st century and, and, and not entered into agreements on the national stage. Yet at the same time, we recognize that, that, that China is a, is a global power, and we need to make sure that we're finding ways to move forward with them in a constructive pathway. But there's no doubt that uh, there's a lot of concerns that this administration has expressed about China's affront on human rights abuses as well as where it is on a national security perspective the threats that it pose to peaceful nations. Yeah, and frankly, you know, uh, President Trump and Vice President Pence have completely changed the conversation on this. Um, you know, we had we had a survivor of Tiananmen Square on the set earlier, Rose Tang, and, and she said that there are naked bodies floating in the river, that there are mysterious disappearances of people. And she went on to say that, um, you know, this, the, the Uyghurs are in concentration camps. Do, do, all, do any of these human abuses come into the conversation as, as the leadership of the country, President Trump, Vice President Pence, are trying to do a trade deal with China? D does this matter, the, the fact that you've got almost two million Muslims in, in concentration camps right now because they're not allowed to be Muslim? They want to follow the Chinese leadership, want them to be Chinese? Absolutely, Maria. I think that uh, it's become part of the conversation. And again, the vice president's speech is a couple weeks ago. I'd refer your viewers to. He talked about the persecution of the Uyghur Muslims as well as persecution of Christians and the human rights abuses that happen in China. And as you recall, he made a very simple comment, in fact, about as well that the NBA came down on one of the general managers for the Houston Rockets who was standing with the people of Hong Kong and, um, and he was silenced. And I think there's an irony that a lot of the uh, the people who are persecuted in China are sent away to concentration camps, as you say, never to be heard from again. But here in America, if you speak out, then then you get silenced and shamed. So uh, we do th we do the submission has spoken out and it continues to speak out. But at the same time, I think there's a recognition that we can't decouple the economies entirely. And so yes, we're speaking out and saying we want to see these abuses fixed, but. But it's not, in a, it's not a retreat that, that says we can't still have trade deals. It's just that we want to make sure that human rights abuses are, are acknowledged. Mm. We want to make sure that they're fixed. We want to make sure as well yeah. that so many of the things that China's done on the economic front, from cheating on trade deals and devaluing its currency, that those are resolved too. All right, let me bring you back to the United States domestic issues. The president is expected to speak later today at the Economic Club of New York. Fox Business is carrying that speech live. Mm. Uh, I'll be there as well. What should we expect to hear from the president today? Well, Marie, I think that we have a lot to be proud of, that uh, since Donald Trump has been elected president, uh, more, close to 7 million new jobs have been created in this economy. Unemployment's all-time lows for African Americans, all-time lows for Hispanic Americans, all-time lows for Asian Americans. Uh, this economy continues to, to be a booming economy. 
In addition, wage increases is something that uh, we probably don't speak about enough, but despite inflation being low, we've seen significant rises in wage increases, particularly for those in the middle income sector. So uh, there's a lot that, uh, that we can talk about. The president, I think, will talk about the benefits of the reg anti-regulatory agenda of this administration, as well as tax reform. And I think he'll give a signal ahead as to what we can expect on the trade front. As you've covered many times, while Congress continues to pursue sham investigations, what it means is they've not done the things they promised voters they would do. In 2018, they promised they work with this administration on lowering drug prices. They promised they work with us on infrastructure. And they also promised they work with us on trade deals. And we remain anxious to complete some of those trade deals to keep this economy going. Yeah, you mentioned uh, stronger wages. Wages are up over the last year, and the economy is growing. Uh, partly the needle moved as a result of the president's policies, no doubt about it. But people are worried about the consumer. We've got retail sales coming out later this week. Walmart's going to be reporting its earnings as well. Do you see any cracks in the consumer right now, Mark? No, I think, in fact, just this month, the consumer, consumer sentiment number was strong again. Uh, we remain encouraged by that. And, you know, another statistic, Maria, is that the average family since Donald Trump was elected has seen income increase by $5,000 per year. That's a remarkable number. And so we think that that's continuing to fuel a lot of the, uh, the consumer sentiment in this country. But as you know, there are worries that everything that the president and this administration has done to lift all boats in terms of the economy and his uh, deregulation efforts may be taken away. Away because of the tariffs. President Trump reportedly expected to once again delay tariffs on European autos. Uh, what can you say about that? He could announce those plans during his speech today. The European Union not commenting on the developments. But if we were to get a tariff on European autos going into the very busy holiday season, wouldn't that be a big negative for the economy? Is the president going to announce uh, that he'll uh, delay that? Well, Maria, you know I can't get in front of the president on that, so I think you'll have to stay tuned for his remarks. But I think that so far what you've seen is this president's been able to reset many of the trade deals in which countries were taking advantage of the United States and try to provide a fairer, more level playing field to protect the workers in this country. And he's been able to do it with the economy continuing to grow. And so I have confidence that'll continue to be the case. I think what stands in front of us, though, is, is again, one of the largest trade deals, our two largest exporters are Canada and Mexico. And we have a trade deal in place. But rather than actually passing legislation that will help the American people, Democrats want to stay focused on sham investigations. That's the first thing we can actually do to continue to improve the trade front. Yeah, I, I th you make a good point. I mean, at this point, Nancy Pelosi said that she's on a path to yes. Should we read into that, that USMCA is going to come to the floor by year end? I, we're hopeful it will, Maria. I think that uh, that some of us who are more cynical of this process think that she's facing a lot of pressure from many of her um, moderate Democrats who need to show that they're willing to work with this administration. And I think she's probably using this leverage on the impeachment vote. So I think probably the timing of those two will be pretty close. And so we would hope that it would be done by the end of this year. But uh, but it's a pretty cynical way to run this uh, this Congress when, in fact, there's there's legislation that could help American workers and help the middle class. But basically, it's being used as, as leverage with impeachment votes. Well, the impeachment is on. They're going to do public hearings this week. Democrats want to make a case that the president pressured Ukraine into investigating Joe Biden and his son over the allegations of corruption. The president tweeted this morning, I will be releasing the transcript of the first and therefore more important phone call with Ukrainian president before week's end. So is there any reason to believe that, you know, the president's first phone call and that transcript is going to uh, put him in a worse position? Oh, no. I think that uh, releasing that transcript only will benefit the president. But, Maria, for your viewers, just to pull back for a second, you know, this administration has, has made the case that it's a sham investigation and more or less a star chamber because the head of the investigation, Adam Schiff, has lied to the American people about cooperating with the whistleblower. He's provided fake testimony in front of his committee of the American people. They've not allowed due process for our administration to provide witnesses to this point or to see the evidence that's been brought forward. That's a total sham, and people in the American people know what is fair and what's not fair. But pull back for a second, and when you get past the process, step back and say, so this is an impeachment about money that was released within the fiscal year, about claiming a cover-up when the president's provided the entire transcript for all the American people to read, and the president of Ukraine said he felt no pressure whatsoever from the president. I think it's kind of hard for the American people to say, this is what you're pursuing instead of lowering my drug prices? instead of getting legislation done to help our infrastructure, yeah. instead of passing trade deals, 
I think that's a, that's a very difficult situation I think the Democrats have put themselves in. Well, the president has been, you know, walking on eggshells from the beginning of his, of his presidency, whether it be the Steele dossier and the efforts to frame him or what Nikki Haley told us. You know, she's embracing President Trump as she promotes her new book. Uh, is there any truth to the recurring reports that she's eyeing a spot as Trump's vice president in 2020? Oh, I, I think that this vice president and this president enjoy a remarkable relationship that has benefited the American people. And uh, we look forward to, uh, to them being on the ticket together in 2020. And the vice president's been pleased to accept the president's invitation to do that. Well, what about uh, the deep state? How significant are these people within the White House that are against this president? Nikki Haley's telling the story about how, you know, Rex Tillerson and, and, and uh, John Kelly uh, basically pressured her to, to go along with them, to go against the president and his policies. Well, well, I, hey, look, I think that uh, the General Kelly is an American hero, and I think that, you know, this weekend we honor our veterans and we honor his service to our country. We honor the fact that his son died in service to our country mm -hmm. on this weekend. And so I never witnessed that from John Kelly, and I, and I, um, I can't speak to, to the relationship she had with Rex Tillerson, but certainly um, I never witnessed that from John Kelly. All right, Mark, we look forward to all of the above, the president speaking today, and, of course, uh, the, the ramp-up to 2020. Good to see you, sir. Thanks so much. Thanks, Maria. Thanks for having me on. Mark Short is at the White House.